Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. The Lord is saying today, just as I sent an angel from heaven to stir up the waters in the pool of Bethesda, so shall my spirit stir the stagnant waters across the earth within the hearts of every man that is seeking me. Yes, I will stir up healing once more. For every heart is a spiritual water catchment where the waters of my living revival have become stagnant in many and only by prayer and fasting will it build up momentum like a dam that is building up with waters that can only spill over. So shall I cleanse the hearts of man that desire me more within this hour. This stirring that has already started within many has come to bring a separation of the pure living waters of my word from the contaminated waters of sin and compromise that have crept in within the hearts of each man, especially those that desire me within this hour. There is a clear separation coming that will be achieved by my stirring my child. So be ready for the flow of my living water and allow me to bring that separation by my spirit. Yes, I will stir up these dams within your hearts to bring the waters over the dams to spill over my child. Yes, I will drain the very real dirty waters from your thought life and stir Stir up pure thoughts towards heavenly things within this stirring. So allow me to do what I must do within this hour. Just like in the natural, there are dried up creeks and streams on the earth. But when the heavy rains come, they flow back into the river. And so I will flood every dry area of your life and bring you back into my river that flows from the throne. Yes, for just as there is water that has subsided under the earth and dormant, I will bring fountains of living water deep down from within side of you, my child. Then once all these waters that have stirred up within many hearts, they will all flow towards the big river of revival, and Christ will be the source of this living water, my child. Yes, my spirit will bring and start to move upon my children, especially upon those that have yielded themselves to me completely. Those that are obedient to me with every one of my instructions. Therefore, you don't need to try to make things happen like you did in previous seasons, but rather just allow me to link you into the right divine Kairos moments within each and every day, my child. For my Kairos timing helps manifest your destiny, my child. Many in the past that have been isolated doing their individual things will soon be joined together in the same river and flow to form this end time army that is totally controlled by my spirit for me at their forefront as their captain. Yes, with this stirring, you will not only see an outpouring of my spirit, but you will see the largest of the harvest of souls that have ever been before, and some of the greatest miracles that you've ever seen upon the face of the earth in each and every nation. I am calling you to abide and to move in my love, to reach out for every lost soul and every backslidden Christian. Pride and arrogance will be a stumbling block for many because just like Naaman they are expecting me to work in a particular way and when I come along and move in a different way than what they expected they will even reject it at times but remember I will show no partiality to any that I will pour out my spirit upon within this hour that is why I said I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh so the sooner my people let go 
and let me, my child, in every area of your life. It is only then that you will see your life having full purpose and peace within me as your living water. Therefore, no longer strive with me in the flesh and allow me to take over. Whatever your struggle is today, just surrender it over to me. For it is not by your strength or by your power, but only by the power of my spirit. My spirit can do more in one minute than what you can do within years. So don't strive or struggle any longer, my child. There is no need to chase positions, giftings, or my anointing within my church within this hour. For there is plenty to do, but rather seek to allow me to refine you to who I want you to be, that you may be worthy to carry my anointing, to carry my gifting and my positioning. Learn to be pliable like clay and allow me, your potter, to mold you into my image for your good and for my glory. You may be isolated now. You may be shut in now, but I have called you out as my ecclesiasta within this hour to get alone with me. But soon the time is coming that my river will lead you to others that are flowing down the same stream, my child. Yes, I will connect my people from all nations to flow in the same spirit that will flow from the same revelation that I am speaking to my church within this hour. It is time to prepare for the great harvest that will come in. Prepare your nets and prepare the workers for what is to come. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I will send my fire of my anointing and my fire flame ones will move upon the earth. Yes, they will traverse a Upon this earth and set this place on fire. Therefore, know that I am with you and I am stirring you up within this hour. Be still and know that I am God. Shalom. Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to day 20 of 21 days of prayer and fasting for revival within your personal life, within your homes, within your marriages, within your children, within your churches and communities. And though many people, uh, when I mentioned I was going to continue 40 days, they actually want to join as well. So you're most welcome. Or if you're just coming along and hearing this for the first time, you can actually start the 21 day fast from today or from tomorrow and just start the program. There's actually going to be, there. I've, I've made a playlist also of all the 20, which will be 21 day uploads uh, that I did. Then you can just listen to them from the beginning so that they can co- Um, you know, they can go together with the teachings that we're doing each day as well. Hallelujah. But the Lord has been prompting and speaking uh, to me in specifically about revival that's coming to the church of Jesus Christ. And the important thing is that we need to position ourselves to receive this revival. Hallelujah. You can't live off yesterday's revelation. That's what we're seeing today in the church when churches are established. We seem to live off the revelation of the establishment of that church and people tend to become stagnated. We can't afford to be stagnated in this hour because the next move of God is going to be greater than you've ever seen or heard of before. So therefore, you don't want to be the very people that persecute the new move of God, but you want to position yourself and say, God, I want to be ready. I want to receive that revelation. So I just want to turn to scripture today. According to John chapter 1, verses 35. Now, John the Baptist at this stage, we see that, you know, Jesus uh, had um, had received the baptism uh, of the Holy Spirit, had received um, the Holy Spirit's empowerment who went into uh, the wilderness and so forth and uh, was tempted by the devil. And also we're now starting to see that Jesus's ministry is started because John the Baptist now sees Jesus coming towards him and says, Behold the Lamb of God. Now, the two disciples that were with him at that time, which is John, 
uh, which is the revelator who's writing the book of John, and also Andrew, which is the uh, brother of Simon, which is later to be called Peter. They hear him say this, and they hear this revelation. They grab that revelation. They actually leave John the Baptist and start to go and follow Jesus Christ. Now, that's hard for a lot of people. Maybe you've been brought up in a Baptist church, maybe a Methodist church, maybe a particular Pentecostal church, maybe an Assemblies of God church somewhere, maybe in a Catholic church, wherever it is. But many people like to hold on to those roots of the previous revelation. But God is saying, no, I'm doing something more in this hour. Maybe you've even come across these teachings and you're saying, yes, what this man of God is saying is true because it is a revelation. It's a word in season. God is giving us words in season. So what did they do? They went after Jesus. Jesus turns around and says to them, what can I do for you? Who are you looking for? He's not just asking them, or where are you going? He's not saying to them, hey, look, um, you know, who are you looking for in the natural? He's saying, who are you searching for spiritually, eternally? Because he was the answer to them. And they just say, hey, we just want to come and follow you because you are the teacher. They called him rabbi. You are the teacher. Where are you staying? And he says, come and see. Hallelujah. So they went and followed him. They were his first disciples who both of them became his his apostles also within the church. And then it says that they went on to see Simon and he spoke to Peter and he said to him, uh, he said to Simon, he says, I will call you Peter from this time. He had a revelation. Because Andrew went and said, hey, there is a man that I believe is the Messiah. Come and see. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to come and see. Sometimes we need to have our spiritual eyes open. Now, not all the disciples of John the Baptist went to follow Jesus Christ. In actual fact, there was only two with him that day that received that particular revelation. But many of them who were with him and maybe even saw uh, Jesus being baptized at that particular time and heard him saying that I'm not even fit to undo the sandals of his feet and he will come to baptize you with spirit uh, and with fire. Now, many of them may not have come and followed Jesus Christ because we see that uh, according to Mark 2 verse 18, it says, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting and they came and said to him, why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? So some were still blinded off a previous revelation from John the Baptist, who was saying, hey, you know, I'm here declaring the way of one that's coming. So they hadn't received that Jesus is the one coming. So you don't want to be one like that that is stuck in your old mold and not able to receive what God wants to tell us in this hour. And what does Jesus go on to say? He says that while the bridegroom is with them, they will not fast. But when he goes, they will have a time to fast. And that's why we are fasting now. Hallelujah. We are fasting because we are preparing for what is to come. Then he goes on to say, and he says, No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on a garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old and tear, tears what is made worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins, and the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined, but new wine must be put into new wineskins. What is that speaking about us in particular today? If you want to receive revelation, new revelation, you can't just live off old revelation. You must be receiving new revelation from God. And that's what God is going to do in this hour. God is going to do things beyond our understanding. He's going to work beyond the four walls of your church, like what we've used to. Even revival is not going to be the way it was in the past. Why do you think God has allowed us to be put into our homes at this time. And, you know, there are some people that are still working. And God bless 
issue. But you know what I'm talking about as well. There is a change in the atmosphere. There is a change. People are starting to ask questions. Now, while you are in your homes, you have a choice whether to continue with all the earthly things that we, 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 we are bound by, And that's why Jesus said, who are you looking for? He was asking them a spiritual question. Though that they were just looking at it from an earthly perspective, where are you staying? He says, come and see. We need to follow Jesus Christ. We need to put aside those things and we need to press in in this hour because the revelation is that revival is coming to the church of Jesus Christ. But that church at this moment is in your home. Because all the church buildings are closed. Where two or three are gathered, that is His church. God is speaking to His people so that you get a deeper revelation. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells inside of you. Where two or three are gathered, that is His church. It's a revelation of us coming to that understanding so that when God starts to pour out His Spirit, you will start to understand that it goes beyond the four walls. It doesn't mean that God is done with His church because we are His church and people will gather into churches and buildings because that is a place we can come corporately. But at this particular time, we are shut in our homes. We are fasting and praying and church is inside of you. Hallelujah. We got to get ready because God is about to do something new and you must also be willing to receive the new wine but it needs for you to receive the new wine you got to change your mindset You can't say, well, I was brought up a Catholic. I'm going to die a Catholic. I was brought up an AOG. I'm going to die an AOG. I was brought up a Baptist. I'm going to die a Baptist. No, you will die in that old revelation. You got to say, I am a child of God. Jesus, wherever you're going, I want to come after you. I want to follow you. I'm willing. I'm willing to leave an old on all revelation, like the two disciples with John the Baptist. It just says, they left him. <laughs> John the Baptist thought, wow, they're leaving me. But he realized that he must decrease, that Jesus must increase. We've got to do the same. When we decrease, when we fast, when we pray, and we start to crucify this flesh, we start to draw closer to Him. He becomes stronger. The Spirit of the living God that lives inside of you becomes stronger, and you are able to do what God has called you to do. God is about to pour out His Spirit, but have you positioned yourself? What does the Bible say? According to Galatians, there is a warning for us. It says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth uh, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Those only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law and by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having began in the Spirit and are now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. Now this is talking about the justification of faith. But what I'm talking about here, many of us who start in the spirit can finish in the flesh. Meaning there are churches that have started in the spirit on a great revelation, but have only stayed on that revelation and haven't continued to grow. Therefore, they start to persecute the new thing. Now, I'm not talking about the, um, the, the, the apostasies and stuff that, that, that we shouldn't question within the church. I'm just saying, if in the Bible it says that God healed, then why should we not believe that God heals today? If the Bible says that He delivers people, why should we not believe that God still delivers people today? If God came and gave the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues in the Bible, why should we neglect and reject that today? There are some people that are willing to die for the Word of God, but they don't believe in what God said about His 
His Word. We've got to receive the fullness of His Spirit in this hour. We don't want to start off correctly in the Spirit and finish in the flesh. We want to stay with the justification of faith. We want to stay with the blood of Jesus Christ that washes our sins and also that Jesus is returning again with the fullness of the baptism the Holy Spirit. We also want to believe that Jesus is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh that your children may prophesy. This is the hour to press in. This is the hour to say, God, whatever you're doing in this hour, don't do it without me. Don't pass me by. I want to receive new manna from heaven, new revelation from heaven. Come and touch me. Come and fill me. Don't let me be like those those disciples of John the Baptist that didn't receive the revelation. But let me be like Andrew and John that says, yes, I want to follow after the teacher. I want to follow. And who has he promised to send help he has promised to send us the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us into all truth and he is leading you into all truth as you desire to pursue him with all of your heart and your mind and your soul it's somebody say amen amen Hallelujah. (laughs) I may not hear your replies, but it doesn't matter. I know that where you're sitting right now, you're saying amen because the Spirit of the living God is bearing witness that what I'm saying is truth. Hallelujah. God is going to do something great in this hour. He is stirring you up while you are in your homes, while you are on your way to work. Yes, even while you're hearing this today, the Spirit of the living God wants to touch you. He wants to fill you. He wants to position you. He wants to revive you, restore you, reestablish you to exactly where you need to be in this hour. And how do you know that you're pressing into the Lord in this hour? Hallelujah. God wants to do something. God spoke to me. There are some people. There is someone with fibroids. Someone with fibroids. I just encourage you now to receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Or if you know someone suffering, send this prayer to them straight away in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to those fibroids right now. You will come back into the perfect design of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to a hernia. Someone has a hernia issues right now. God is saying God is going to heal that area and that pain is going to go and they will go back into the perfect design of God position where God had intended them to be in the name of Jesus Christ. I also speak to lower back pain. If you have lower back pain right now and you have a back issue, I speak to that back issue right now. I want you to place your hand upon your back or upon the side, wherever you can. You may Even it's been difficult for you to move, but God is saying, I'm going to touch that area right now. Lord, I pray that you would touch that person right now, right now in the area of lower back pain, leave them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, every disc will come back into the perfect design of God right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You'll start to see that, feel the heat of the Holy Spirit operating there right now. Holy Spirit, do your work now in the name of Jesus Christ. I also speak to those that have had an issue with their digestion. Whatever that digestion is within your stomach area, I speak to those intestines. I speak to that in digestion right now to come back into the perfect design of God right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you would remove whatever is clogged up, whatever pain they are feeling right now, and you will bring healing to that area. So I want you to place your hand upon your stomach right now and receive that healing by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against also arguments within your home right now that have been trying to distract you from pressing into God. There has been a spirit of arguments that has been taking place within that home and a demon has come in and that demon is trying to cause strife within that home. Heavenly Father, I declare today that demon has to be given marching orders right now to leave that house right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak peace. I speak harmony over that house, over those people today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I speak for that person within their home with a hard heart. 
Lord, that you would turn their heart of stone into a heart of flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you'll bring revival to their homes. Lord, that you will touch each person today from the top of their head to the soles of their feet as they press in deeper for more of you. God, touch them. God, fill them. God, renew them. God, restore them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Touch your people today. Fill your people today. Lord, as we're believing in another Pentecost to come for your spirit to be poured out upon all flesh including us whatever you're doing in this hour Lord don't do it without us touch each person Lord renew their strength today in Jesus name we pray and believe amen this is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth Western Australia it is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ Shalom 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 And if you've liked this utterance today, then we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure that you hit the notification button. You can also follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. And thank you to everybody who is sending in the testimonies that we are able to encourage others to build up and stir up their faith, that they may also receive their blessings and also their healings and breakthrough. And as I've mentioned, I'm going to continue the fast for 40 days. So that's just 21 added on 19 days is 40. And what I will do is that our three-day fast that we will have in the month of May will coincide. So I'll still be fasting during that period. And by that stage, hopefully doors will open and we'll be able to move around a little bit more. But I'm believing revival is coming to the nations. Hallelujah. And I believe for those that are partaking, please do. Now, encourage you partake even if you haven't started on the 21 day fast you can start today and finish at the same time as me when I finish my 40 day fast so did if you didn't happen to start you can join now I encourage you while we are in this period of time it is a great time to fast and pray and to bring the flesh into subjection so from my family to yours God bless you we love you precious saints we are praying for you shalom Shalom, shalom.